Hi, I'm Fred. I'm the machine learning lead at Uncord. You've probably also seen a lot of posts about Dino V3, but none of them really show you how to actually use it. So here I am telling you all the important stuff about Dino V3 and showing you how to use it in five minutes. So if you're familiar with Dino V2, Dino V3 is actually not that different. It's very different in scale. So it's like 12x more uh, data. So from um, 140 million images to 1.7 billion images. It's also bigger in terms of parameters. So it's um, 1.1 versus 6.7. Finally, there's this training procedure to fix the local features of each image patch. Now, the second thing I want to highlight here is the fact that Dino V3 has a backbone that can be used for very many different things. We have seen uh, use cases from classification, segmentation, object detection, but also uh, stuff like depth estimation, and even similarity search and natural language search, quite surprising. So very, very versatile uh, model here. And the third thing is that it's extremely user-friendly. I'll show you in the end how you can actually use it um, on your own data very easily. Okay, before we get too deep into benchmarks and applications, let me just show you what it actually does. So take an image like the one on the left here, and then chop it into patches of 16 by 16 pixels. Then all these pixels are processed by Dino. They're processed in this uh, attention uh, way where we have every patch attend to each other. And then what comes out on the other end is this um, long sequence of embeddings. So an embedding is this, this long list of, of numbers. And the cool thing is that if you have two of these things, this one and this one, for instance, if they cover the same uh, semantic content, then they very often have a very high similarity. Similarity. Uh, while if they're very different, they would have a very low similarity. So that is extremely cool. And this model was trained uh, completely without labels in a self-supervised uh, way. So all these patch embeddings, they can be used for very many different things. So in this example, we see all the blue images here on the border of this uh, center image. Every one of them has a small red, red cross. And what it's supposed to illustrate is that if you take the patch embedding uh, underlying that particular cross and compute the similarity to all the other patch embeddings within the image, this is essentially the heat map you'll get or like the similarities. So the more bright yellow, the more similar uh, the other image patch is, the lower or like the more blue, the, the less similarity there is. And that can be used for doing classification. Uh, it can use, be used for object detection, but it can also be repurposed for other stuff like depth estimation, foreground detection. You can track across videos. Um, you can also store uh, many of these embeddings per image in a big database. And then if you're looking for more data of the same type, then you can actually find it this way. So you can do what is called object discovery. Now, the model actually also produces a class embedding, which is essentially an embedding of the entire image. And that you can use to do similarity search across your entire data set. Even if it's a data set that doesn't have a specific semantic meaning where you, you might have captions or other metadata that can t tell things about. Finally, they actually also trained a model to do natural language search. So they trained a um, separate text model that can actually align text embeddings with these image embeddings. And then you can type text and you can find images or videos this way. So very cool in terms of applications. Let's also have a quick look at benchmarks. For the benchmarks, there are many, actually all the applications I showed before, they are backed by benchmarks uh, in the paper. So I definitely encourage you to go look there. But one of the things I wanted to show you guys is that on the left, we have this uh, plot where we can see over time, the supervised learning, that's what we saw with uh, AlexNet and ResNet. It has sort of been doing better for a long time. And then at some point came weekly supervised learning. And then finally, there's this self-supervised learning mechanism. And it's actually catching up very, very quickly to, to the, the rest of the, the fields, which is extremely cool. And it seems like we're very, very close to, to having a paradigm where we can do big scale training once and then you, like really reuse these models for, for other things. For semantic segmentation, you can see that all these different types of self-supervised or um, weekly supervised learning uh, approaches here um, Dino V3 is the best one. But one thing to notice here is that on this particular data set, ADE 20K, the state of the art is actually about, uh, beyond uh, 70 in mean IOU, where we're reaching about 56 or so uh, mean IOU uh, in this case. So there's still a bit of a gap between this and like purposefully made models for this particular problem. Um, but if you are doing things at scale where you, you don't necessarily know upfront what you're trying to achieve, then perhaps this is one um, very good option. Okay, before I show a bit of code live, I just wanted to show you that it actually only takes eight lines of code before you have embeddings for your own data. And furthermore, there are actually 12 different models with different properties, different scales, um, trained on different data sets. So I created this little notebook and you have to install the latest uh, version of Transformers from GitHub. Then you need to uh, restart the runtime once you have done so. Once that's done, you select the model you want to try and you paste the URL for the image you care about. And when you've done that, you can 
when you've done that, you can see the image. First of all, you will see how it's been slightly cropped such that it matches these 16 by 16 pixels. Um, so we have like a regular grid of patches. And you will also see how many embeddings you get in total. So there are 819 embeddings in this case. Um, and then by afterwards, there is also code for running the PCA stuff they're doing in the paper. Where you can actually see um, colors based on the principal components of these embeddings. And finally, you can also try this thing where you compute similarities. So in this case, I ran a patch uh, that is in location 15.5. It's this thing. If I run it again with the grid, you can see here what uh, how the grid looks. So if I wanted to, let's say, take the, the, the photo over here in the background, that is 34 and 2, I guess. 34, 2, like so. And we can see that now it's the, the images over here that have a high um, luminance. Yeah, so you can you can try it out if you want. Links are in the comments. Do let me know if there's anything in particular you think is interesting or you learned along the way. I'd be more than happy to, to hear about it. Um, otherwise, happy hacking.